I decided to do a quick Q&A this morning. Stick around, got some great questions coming right up. One of our cool travel mugs, classic Christian metal fan with all the bands on it. And of course, it's a mug, regular mugs too. It's a poster, it's a t-shirt, cool t-shirt. And uh, in that mug, drinking a little holy cacao, one of our first blends that we ever put out, still one of my favorites, holy cacao with some cacao flavoring in it, really good. And of course, don't forget, you can get that in this size bag, in five pound bags, and K-cups. We got it all, because we're cool like that. <laughs> so folks, thank you for joining me today. Got some great questions that I'd love to answer here. First one says, Dear Pastor Bob, I discovered your ministry several years back. Not sure if it was on Facebook or maybe television. You had a part in getting me plugged back into Christian metal. I gave up secular music and ended up deleting a large chunk of my library. Fast forward several years, I got plugged into church, renewed my relationship with Christ, kept my marriage, got baptized, and started playing on the worship team at my church. I'm releasing a 10-track metal album under the label Latter-day Exploits. I don't need anything from you. Just wanted to let you know. Be well, Pastor Bob. I, I love these comments. And thank you for letting me know what's going on in your life. I really love reading these. And I'm excited to hear what you have to put out. That sounds great. Latter-day Exploits. Let's look it up. Dear Pastor Bob, I listened to what you had to say about pastor's clothes with interest. A few weeks ago, I did uh, a, um, a question about proper pastor attire. We had some fun with that one. It says, I think if you married a wife, she would make you buy more clothes. <laughs> I was a bachelor most of my life. I am only a few years younger than you. I had what I considered enough clothes. When I married my wife, I got rid of what I had. She got rid of what I had and replaced it with better and more clothes. It was an act of love. I also know a pastor who put on a suit and enjoyed it so much he wears one every day. Your mom was probably right to tell you to get some new clothes if they were threadbare. In your case, you have a corporate image to project. Wow. Well, I'm not sure that's the case. And, um, you know, I always feel kind of strange when I, when I watch TV, for instance. Now, I'm a, I have a confession to make. I, I'm a bit of an HGTV junkie. And those of you that don't live in the United States, it's, it's just a, it's a show about home remodeling, home building. Uh, it's just kind of fun to watch. And, I really don't watch much TV at all. I definitely don't watch sitcoms and any of that kind of stuff. Do not watch the news. So it's kind of my guilty pleasure once in a while to watch HGTV. And one of the things that I notice is that, you know, when I was growing up, we had regular size closets. And by that, I mean, it was just a door that went into a fairly average size closet with a rod there and some shelves, basically, and you just put your clothes in that space. These days, I see couples walking into houses when they're looking for homes on the TV, and invariably they say, oh, we'd have to redo the closets. And there are some of these big walk-in closets, and and the, the wife says, well, that's big enough for my stuff, but what about yours? I'm thinking, seriously? Why do we need all of this? And uh, I think there's a balance, and I'm probably off balance on one end. Um, I've lost a lot of weight, and so a lot of my clothes don't fit me any longer. I bought some new pants, but I still have basically three pairs of pants and three shirts now. 
that I wear and they're pretty much just like the ones I used to have. I'm just a creature of habit. And I've read some some stories I told you about in my podcast about, you know, people like Steve Jobs who wore the same thing every day. Uh, Albert Einstein wore the same thing every day and he had multiple copies of that thing, but he wore the same thing. And there were a few others too. And I think, well, I'm in good league with them as well. But I, I just, I don't have any decision to make other than what's clean and what's dirty. And uh, I kind of like that. Anyway, thank you for the comment. Dear Pastor Bob, can you possibly guide me on this? I'm wanting to start giving out blankets, sleeping bags, and New Testaments to the hurting near us. Is there a source for a product that is proven to work for this? I have no plan and no experience at all. You know, I've had a lot of experience and I still don't necessarily have a plan. I would say do what's on your heart. If you have access to blankets and sleeping bags and New Testaments, just start handing them out. People on the streets need everything. You'll get it, just talk to them. See what they need and uh, be a blessing to them as much as you can. And the last question, dear Pastor Bob, have you made a decision about podcasting yet? I would hate to see you stop doing it. I really look forward to watching you every morning. So I did my last podcast on I Need Your Feedback and told you that I was thinking about changing some things up and doing it differently and and all of that. I never considered stopping, by the way. And some of you were afraid I was going to stop and I won't. But I'm, I'm happy to announce that season five of Pastor Bob's Coffee Break will start the first week of January. And we will finish up season four this year. And uh, as we're doing right now, and we'll continue once again next week on our normal schedule, answering questions and I'm so happy for your comments. Some things will be different. We're gonna change things up, do some redesigning, uh, add a few more podcasts. We're not done, we're just getting started. And thank you for watching, it means a lot to me. I appreciate you, my family. God bless you. Don't forget, you are blessed. So go and be a blessing.